Hey everybody, Aaron Blaze here. It's good to see you again. Well, I can't see you, but you can see me. <laughs> and it is the 20th Friday. I love Fridays. I get to do this with you guys. Get to hang out with my son, Dustin. <laughs> I get to imagine Nick on the other end. It's pretty cool. But um, we are going to draw. We got a message yesterday. And I know I have a, I have a, a, a long-standing uh, request to do uh, Kung Fu Panda. And I'm going to get to that, I promise. But today, um, because I'm in an animal mood, I've been drawing a lot of animals lately. We got a request last night from a viewer in Norway, uh, from Catherine Boysen. Boysen. Yeah, and she asked if I would draw horses today because she's been riding horses all her life, and she would like me to draw some horses. And so, I thought I would draw some horses. Sounds like I haven't plan. drawn horses I think since I did my horse drawing course. That Whoa. was how long? I haven't drawn a horse since I did my horse drawing course. <laughs> how, how long was that? Ten years ago? Twenty yeah, years ago? Pretty much. <laughs> and uh, but anyway, let's jump to business. So uh, the big thing is, I want to talk to you guys about. Uh, I got a couple of big things because, uh, of course, we've got Thanksgiving and Black Friday and all kinds of great stuff coming up, which means lots of sales. So we got a lot of things coming up. But I do want to announce that on December twelfth, and I, I talked about this last week. On uh, December 12th, I'm doing another live workshop. And this one I'm really excited about because I'm going to be doing some character design. I'm going to do animal character design. I'm going to do even more specifically than that. I'm going to do some dog animal character design. I guess dog. I, I guess that's redundant because a dog is an animal. But um, uh, I've been I've got some ideas uh, floating in my head for some short pieces of animation that I want to do with some dog. Character. Hey, and we're back. Sorry about that. We had, uh, there's guys doing, down the road doing work on the lines. And first of all, I've got the worst power company in the world. I just get random surges or random outages all the time for no reason. Bright sunny day, power goes out for about two seconds. And then it comes back on. That, that's what just happened. The power literally went out for one second and then came back on, but we lost you guys. Yep. But anyway, I was in the middle of telling you about our workshop. So uh, December 12th is our live workshop. Um, we're going to be doing it on the internet. Uh, go to creatureartteacher.com slash live for more information. But like I was telling you, um, we're doing this. I've been doing these dog characters. And so I want to show you my design process on, on how I came up with these characters. And we're going to draw through that live. But then the other fun thing we're going to do is I'm going to do some animation, but I'm going to do it on paper. I've been doing a lot of paper animation lately. I've been getting kind of nostalgic. And actually, a lot of people, uh, I've been doing YouTube videos, and a lot of people have been showing a lot of interest uh, because you just don't get to see paper animation done very often. And so um, I've really gotten into that. So that is December 12th, um, and it, it is a limited number of seats. I think we're limiting it to 300 people, So uh, and they're selling pretty quickly right now. So if you're interested, go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, and uh, you can get some more information. And also, I want to talk about our Black Friday sales that we're doing every day. Um, this weekend uh, is our your only chance to get my How to Draw Big Cats. That's been a super popular How to Draw 
uh, animals um, series. I've got a whole bunch of them in my uh, in my repertoire. Uh, but how to draw big cats for fifteen dollars? It's the lowest price we've ever made it. It's a huge amount of uh, material. And uh, uh, and so oh, I, also I want to mention that we have a new sale happening every day from now until Black Friday at CreatureArtTeacher.com. So every day between now and the 27th, uh, so over the next week, we have a different sale happening every single day. And we've had a couple different sales going in the past as well. Um, so once again, our How to Draw Big Cats just for this weekend is only going to be $15. It's super cheap. So go and check that out. As a matter of fact, speaking of big cats, I want to show you something. Um, this is something that I did uh, over the last few days. I just got a wild hair and decided that I wanted to draw. I don't know how well you can see these. But um, I wanted to draw some realistic uh, cougars and just animate it and see how it would look. Right. And uh, Let me zoom it in. there we go. Yeah. And I got in there and rendered them, and it was just, it was fun. And he's not really doing much. He's just moving and rotating. But I just thought it would be really cool. Let me show you. I shot a YouTube video for it. And uh, let me pull it up real quick. Where's my mouse? There it is. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. So... This is just the end of the video. If you want to see the full video, go to my YouTube channel if you're not on it already. Uh, but um, at the end of the video, I get up and walk away, but you get to see it uh, animate, which is really cool. So Dustin and I, all we did was we shot photographs of each drawing on my pegboard, and then we cut them together in Premiere. I threw some cross dissolves between each drawing, and then I did a truck in, so it came out. had a nice effect. So, um, so yeah, so this is animating on paper. We've been, ever since I did that, that bear demo, I just, I've really had, and when I did the dog, the running yeah. dog, um, I've really had a great time, uh, doing that. So, I'm going to put you back. I'm going to make it nice and small. Nice, nice and small. Nice and small. There we go. <laughs> Nick says, that's a cougar, not a wild hare. <laughs> You're right. And so, the other thing too, uh, uh, coincidentally enough, today we are drawing horses, and I happen to have a how to draw horses course on my website. So uh, if today you're into drawing horses, and you want to uh, learn more about drawing horses, then go to my website, creatureartteacher.com, and I've got a whole course in there, and uh, I had a lot of fun making that course. Sweet. But uh, once again, I've got Dustin with me. He's a man in the booth on the other side. Hi. Hi. Oh, whoops, wrong button. <laughs> oh, there you Hi, go. There we go. <laughs> and we got Nick Birch, my business partner over in Sarasota. Hopefully soon going to be here in Orlando, close. And um, so we're going to be drawing horses today, or at least a horse. But I, I don't know what I'm going to draw. I just know it's going to be a horse. It's a good question to you, babe. I know. So let's, uh, I haven't sat down and drawn digitally in a, in a while. So let's get in there. Let's uh, let's start with some questions. All right. Oh, and uh, by the way, it I'm is. drawing in uh, Photoshop 2021. Ooh, the new Photoshop. There's a new Photoshop. There is. And what's, uh, what's new about it? I don't know. <laughs> I just know it's the latest one. I upgraded. Actually, you know, I want to turn. Uh, Let's rotate 90 degrees. There we go. I like that before. I like that better. Let's see. I like drawing big horses. Whoa. Hey, Aaron. Hey, what's going on, eh? Uh, have you ever used canvas paper? I know Strathmore has one, and I suspect uh, Arches does as well. Uh, if you have used one, uh, how do they do? And are they good for finished pieces or just comps? Uh, I've never used it. So, sorry you had to read all that. But I've never, I've never used it. Uh, I, mean, I suspect it's pretty cool. You know? Yeah. 
Here I'm just just kind of scribbling, trying to find an idea. Scribbling, scribbling, scribbling. Right. Got any questions there? Not yet. Come on, people. Come on. Need a few questions, people. Maybe a horse with those prehistoric stripes on their legs. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, we could do a horse that has different, some like crazy markings on it. I want to get like this regal pose in it. I'm drawing the head a little small right now. Don't ask. What are we drawing today? Trojan horse? <laughs> nope, that's made out of wood. Would you like to have worked on an animated series like Gummy Bears? No. <laughs> no. What will your next course be? Will there be another one in this year? No. Uh, well, from me, no. But we will have more courses from more people. Uh, we've got several new courses we got ron uh uh tony cipriano and his sculpture course and we've got uh david coleman and his character design course and then we've got let me get this back here chuck williams and his business of pitching course Yep, currently working on that. Yep, Dustin's working on that. You ever watch the movie War Horse? Yes. It's great. I unfortunately have not. That's a, These are horrible back legs, but I'm going to fix those. But as I draw, I'm going to change that. Is War Horse set in <laughs> You War know what I just did? What? I've gotten so used to grabbing my eraser, I was, I was reaching for my <laughs> needed eraser. Seriously? Yeah. I love that. Of course I have it. Yeah. <laughs> A horse with spider spider legs. Weird look. Have, have you ever tried it? No, I've never tried it. Don't think I want to. Yeah, I can't really imagine a uh, horse with uh, spider legs. No. That'd be a little, uh... Be a little crazy. It'd, it'd be a little creepy. Be a little creepy, dude. Hey, this uh, this question is more on the gear side. What kind of uh, camera do you use uh, to record your courses? DSLRs and mirrorless have that 30-minute limit, and it's been a pain. No, we have a, what's called the Black Magic. Uh, do you want to talk about the Black Magic, Dustin? Uh, sure. Well, what we... We recently got these black magics, and we uh, we've been using them so far for YouTube videos, but we haven't yet used them for courses. But before, we we're actually using handy cams, which we actually have one right here. So we've been using these handy cams uh, that are made by Sony. So we've been using those for our, how how many years before this upgrade? Oh, long time. Um, and then also, uh, I believe it was the Birds of Prey course. We actually used my Sony uh, Sony uh, gear, which was the A9 Mark II. Yeah. Um, but we it kind of varies to, uh, depending. But the future, we're definitely going to be using the cameras that we're currently using for our faces, which are indeed Black Magics with uh, uh, Luminix, I believe, Luminix lenses, uh, which are I think the L mount series. So yeah. Oh, and all the also all the cameras that we that we use like uh, my personal cameras, the handy cams, all of them they have no uh, they have no limit in recording time. Yeah, and which that's is a nice. major plus. It's a major major plus.
Any tips on getting back into drawing or illustrating? There we go. Now I'm getting bumped on the mic. Just do it. Do it. Just do it. Do it. Um, yeah, I mean, the only way you get back into anything is just to do it. And I, you know, I make, I make jokes about that, but seriously, just do it. What do you think of Spirit Stallion of the Samaran? Love it. You've known uh, John Baxter throughout your animated career. James Baxter. James Baxter. Did I say Jim Baxter? You said John. John. James. I've known James for almost 30 years. Maybe a surfing horse? Nope. I want to get something that's, I want to get a nice, I want to get a nice uh, kind of feel to the um, pose. I kind of like this one. I'm, I'm getting a nice vibe out of this one. I might take this through to finish. You reach with your right right hand for the eraser. When, when doing uh, on paper, do you draw lefty and erase, erase righty? Uh, uh, no, I actually erase left, but it, I just happened to keep it. There's a, a pen holder, uh, a clasp up on the right side of my desk, and that's where I keep the eraser. It just so happens that's where I keep it. Yeah, that feels pretty neat. I like, I love horse forms and getting in there and scribbling them out. There. Hey. <laughs> Have you seen uh, Milk Call's pencil test for Shere Khan on YouTube? Oh, yeah. Your cougar animation reminded me of that. Well, that's a huge compliment. Uh, I'm a huge Milk Call fan. As a matter of fact, if as you've a, never seen it before. As a matter of fact. Uh, as a matter of fact. From Sleeping Beauty, you can see I have a, a little drawing here of Prince or uh, King... What was his name? King Edward? I can't remember his name now. I'm drawing a complete blank in front of everybody. But uh, this is a Milk Call drawing. Original Milk Call drawing right here. Right. Right here. Right. Right. right there. Oops. Oh, do I, do I just realize what I'm going to be doing today because that voice reminded me of a certain character? Uh. When I get home, I'm going to watch the Animaniacs. Oh, Hulu. Travis, your Uncle Travis saw it. He said it was awesome. Oh, yeah? Yeah, he loved it. I can't I'll wait. I remember growing up watching the Animaniacs. Yeah. Like, and when they first announced that they were that they were bringing back the Animaniacs, uh -huh. I was like, wait, what? Hey, Aaron and Dustin. Hey, how's it oh, going? I hope you're doing well. We are. <laughs> I remember you did a review of the 16-inch uh, Cintiq. Uh, have you used it since, and would you still recommend it? Cheers. Yes, absolutely. I've taken it on the road for, with me back before COVID became a thing. And it's a great, for us, it was a great travel Cintiq. And it's pretty much your second mo monitor for your laptop whenever you're on the yeah. go. I like to use it when I'm doing uh, like CTN, light box conventions, things like that. I can bring it with me. Yeah, I want to get those legs just a little shorter. Give this horse a little more pow pow. A little more pow pow. Pow pow. Cacao. Cacao. 80% cacao. Cacao. Hey, Jesse. Jesse says, I'm going to draw another horse today. Well, awesome. Have you seen any of the horses she's recently made? I haven't seen them. i got to see them. So this one's getting a little stiff. I want to have some fun with it. and Let's uh, do some more drawing over the top of it. Yeah, even her uh, profile picture is that of, a, of one of her horses. Oh, nice. I like it. I love it. 
I love it. YouTube yeah. question. Hi there. I live on an, uh, in an island above of Scotland. Wow. There's a lot of wildlife out here and lots of orcas. How would you go about drawing them? Um, probably get out there and try to avoid the bad weather if it's possible <laughs> and draw from life. If you can get out, can you get out in the boat? That'd be even better. Here's a full body. Oh, nice. Love it. Why do Disney and other animated thingies uh, draw animate horses goofy and as if they act like dogs? Because that's their way of giving them personality a lot of times. Advice on composition. Are there rules? Yeah, there's always rules. Yep. Yeah. But my, my basic rule for composition is if it looks good, it is good. Now, there's certain things that you can do that will help. And, uh, uh, you know, the rule of thirds and the golden ratio and all of those are, are great things to think about. And, uh, you know, like, for instance, if you have a composition like this, if you break it up into thirds, like so, Having your center of interest on in these areas is usually a more interesting idea. But then there's plenty of compositions where you can put your character in the center because you're trying to get something across or extreme in the bottom. Um, you know, lots of different things that'll... Like, you know, for every rule, there's another counter rule. <clears throat> there we go. I like kind of, I like uh, coming in and kind of disnifying it a little bit. Disnifying. Sleeping Beauty and 101 Dalmatians are two of my favorite features. They're beautiful oh. films. Oh, yeah. Uh, what thoughts do you have on the qualities of hand ink cells versus Xerox cells? Um, I like, I, to be honest with you, I like um, Xerox cells because it keeps the integrity of the drawing. You know, when you go into inking, it's you're getting a copy of a copy of a copy because um, a lot of times the, the animator did the roughs and then someone came through and cleaned them up. And then someone else, someone else came along and drew over that for the ink line. And it's just, it's just, you know, it, it's it's a generation further away from the original animator's drawings. And so, I mean, I, I, I like ink and paint, but I, I love seeing the, the, uh, the, the original animator's drawings. I just love seeing that. Hey, Aaron and Dustin. Hey, how's it going? Suggestion. Um, I know you don't do do critiques, but I think it would be cool uh, to do a reacting to subscribers animations or illustrations with a quick tip here and there, like making a, like a YouTube videos based on that, like uh, reaction videos. That could be cool. Yeah. What do you think? I think that'd be a great idea. You do, do you? I do. I do, I do, I do. Any chance you could do a None. video? Huh? No chance. Okay. 
Jenny upstairs. <laughs> Uh, oh, yeah. Any chance you could do a, a video someday of you going through your bookcase and talking about the books? That's a great idea. I like that. YouTube question. Yes. You, you, no, no. Have you ever animated horses in a film? Uh, I've animated horses. Um, I'm trying to remember if I animated them for in Pocahontas. Did I animate them? Well, I didn't have them in Pocahontas. Like, um, I thought they did at one point or there's at least no i've never animated them for a film i have animated them for myself but not for a film i guess that's you didn't who was it um when well, i know you worked on like uh worked on yao and uh in the ancestors yeah but i didn't did you ever do... help at all with Khan? no no i didn't no that was all cooper schmidt Actually, I don't remember if I if I ever uh, personally asked this question because I remember stereo, working at Stereo D when we're working on different movies. Yeah. If we're caught up enough with um, with uh, with our personal uh, project, like if we're working on one movie but another project is falling behind, yeah, we end up getting redirected to them. Oh yeah. Like, do you guys? Oh, definitely. You guys do that with with it, characters and yep. with other movies entirely. Yeah, we did that all the time. Back legs are a little funky, but I'm going to get in there and redraw again. I like this pose. Let's take this and let's have some fun with it. And actually, uh, uh, my own follow-up to that question, because it just because when you're moving from one project to another that's already going on, uh -huh. do they give you like like a week or two weeks to, to catch up with the style of like understanding? How They'll the usually works? give us a month. A month? Yeah. Wow. Yep, yeah, they would give us at least three weeks. Yeah, because you're having to learn like an, an entirely different style of drawing for, for that animation. Exactly. But, He's not going to twist his head that way. What am I doing? Come on, Aaron. What are you doing? You know your anatomy better than that. Uh, how many roles are involved into uh, traditional animation? I know about background and in-betweens, but uh, I'm sure there's much more to do. Oh, there's a ton. There's, there's, you know, starting at the top, there's the producer, and you got the director, and you've got uh, uh, art director, and then you've got associate producer, production managers, then you've got animators, you've got background painters, you've got art directors. Uh, I mean, I, I'm going to forget tons of people but there's really a lot Catherine just pre just uh, sent us another uh, voice message oh I'll play it for you Thanks to Stin, say hi to your father from me. I love you guys and know your banter. You're huh. funny. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Catherine. And I think the person that was asking earlier about the uh, the canvas pads um, with the Strathmore, uh, the whole question at the very beginning, yeah. I think uh, he missed that answer when uh, I think he might have went AFK for a minute. Um, can you re repeat the answer? I've never, for that yeah, I've never used them. Never used <laughs> that was my answer. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know how they work, if they're good or not. I've never used them. Are you uh, speaking at CT uh, or CNT this year, or I think you meant to say CTN? Uh, we haven't set anything up yet. I don't like that pose. <laughs> hey, Aaron and Dustin, any chance you can do just a plain old video? Just a plain old video. Uh, I don't know what he means by that. Just 
Nothing too extreme, I guess. I have no idea what that means. <laughs> maybe, maybe just like a simple, just sit down podcast kind of talk. Just no macro shots, no drawing, just sitting and talking. That's my guess. Always be saying. <laughs> I remember you saying way back when uh, that you participated on the animation with the Lion King video game project, the one on uh, Sega Genesis and Super Nintendo. Yeah. I'd love to know how you participated in the on the project. Oh, I just, uh, I did some of the animation of the characters, uh, the way they move around. And, uh, you know, some of the Simba animation and some of the other characters so yeah it was just coming up with the animation for how they moved youtube how do you light a scene from your mind i'm confident my drawing skills i moved into grayscale painting i can shade anything with a reference but i cannot do it with my own drawing suggestions just keep doing it from life and you'll start figuring it out i know that's kind of a cop-out once again i always say cop-out but it is it is uh um that's how you do it. You just learn by doing it. And sorry, I've got to get. The, I'm trying to get the weight shift on this right. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. Is this still raining out? It is a little bit. Yeah, a little bit. Oh, just a little bit. See, now that I'm, I've added the other horse. I want to. Uh, Want to change the composition again? A little smile, a little yeah. horse smile, a little horse smile. I'll put a little character in here of a couple of horses. My family just watched Sleeping uh, Hollow this week. I was admiring the complexity of the horse chase, Ichabod reacting to the horse, camera angles changing, etc. Where would you even begin with creating animation that complex? Yeah, it's it's pretty amazing. It's something else. And did I pronounce that name right, Ichabod? Uh huh. Okay. Yep, Ichabod Crane. All right, I got to turn this around. Got to rotate it again. Rotate. Are you still considering selling the bears you drew in your last stream? I've been checking on your site almost every day to see if they'd be up. Did I miss them? Am I too late? Thanks. Love you guys. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, uh, I'm thinking about it. I just haven't done it yet. So sorry about that. Um, we could uh, let me make him a little bigger. Make him a bigger horse. Let's get a little overlap. And she's, maybe it's a little flirty horse. And he's like, what? <laughs> Aaron, I would love a course on how to draw backgrounds and layouts for animation. Say that again? I would love a course on how to draw backgrounds and layouts for animation. We have one in the works. We do, do we? We do. Twitch question, Aaron, I stumbled upon and bought a Bob Coon animal art book at a yard sale. It reminds me of your work. Well, that is a huge compliment. I'm a huge fan of Bob Coon. Got to meet Bob Coon on several occasions. I showed with Bob Coon. We were both part of the uh, the Society of, of Animal Artists. Couldn't talk there for a second. Hello, Aaron. Hello there. Hello there. Do you have any advice on drawing good hair? Yes. Don't draw individual strands. The key to drawing good hair is to draw the shapes, the big shapes. That is a horrible leg. That is a horrible leg. It's to draw big shapes. That's what you want to draw. I 
want this leg to be kind of stretched out. How's your polar bear film coming along? What polar bear film? <laughs> <laughs> it's coming yeah, along good. One. It's coming along very well. Uh, uh, Aaron, if we draw along uh, to live stream, can we post our pictures on Instagram and tag you? I don't want to steal your work. I don't care. Everyone's so paranoid about stealing work and this and that. You can you can draw to your heart's content and post it all you want. I have no problem with you copying what we're doing. I'm hoping that you're going to learn from it. That's the whole goal, right? Nice. Yes, please do. I want you to. Hi, Aaron. Hey, how's it going, eh? How's it going, eh? Have you heard of the uh, Baskir curly horse? I'd love to see your take on, on their fur. Uh, no, I haven't. Let's see here. Baskir. I'm going to get that. I know the wind is blowing the other way, but I've got to. I want to get that all the way through the body here. Oh, wow. Do they have curly hair? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Yeah, here's a picture of one. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> I love that. So I want to see really quick if I, if I let the mane go over the horse. Will we still get the feel of the neck going through? I guess we would. And it feels somewhat feminine, too. I like it. I like it. There we go. Put a layer on top of both of these. Yeah, now we got a little story going on. Let's move this around. Move this around. YouTube question. Sometimes I see you mirror your drawings just to see if it looks good. How is that? How is it that my drawings look good until I mirror it? It looks off, but flipping back, it looks good. I know. Isn't it weird? That's why I mirror them because you. You get used to it looking a certain way, and you don't see imperfections in the drawing. That's the that's the thing. It's very it's a very strange phenomenon. Manamana, ma, ma, manama. Let's uh, let's do this one. <laughs> let's mirror this one. Uh, yeah. See, look at this back. His back is all funky, funky comadina. I don't know why, but when you when you said mirror, I was hearing mirror. Mary, marry my, marry, marry my drawing. <laughs> oh. So what I'm going to do here is just do that. That should be pulled in. The whole part of the leg should be pulled in. Like in here. Anyway. Anywho. Anywho. Uh -huh. That head could be bigger. I'm going to do this. I'm going to blend. I'm going to merge those. And I'm going to grab this. Whoops. I'm going to grab this heel. A heel, heel, heel. Whoops. What did I do? Let's try that again. From the top. What is that? Somebody, what? Do I have the wrong thing? Got the lasso tool. I wonder if this is a new uh, 2021 thing. I'm trying to grab this section and it just disappears. Let me see if it's just underneath. I got 20, 20 what? problems in this, <laughs> and this horse is one. Okay, I have that. I'm on that layer. 
image. Let me rotate the image. Twitch question. Any tips on animating a character breathing, like if it is snoring or something? Whenever I try it, it makes my character look large and off model. Breathing is very, very subtle. You have to do it very subtly. That, and, and the timing has to be right as well. There we go. Why? Why? I don't know. There we go. That feels more like the right size for him. But what I don't like. <laughs> You're talking about um, the just sitting around and, and hanging out in a video. Um, Kirk Michael wrote, yes, I agree. A simple live stream or a live hangout where you guys just sit around and talk art life get drunk and stuff be a great stream <laughs> you wouldn't like me when i'm drunk <laughs> i don't know if we can uh get drunk while live streaming but we can can at least have like a sit like an actual sit down conversation <laughs> maybe like tell tell some of some of our best and worst moments of our of our jobs like you with Disney and me with uh, Stereo D and Digital Domain. Yeah. All right, let's draw this now. I know we've been at this for, what, an hour? Oh, 47 minutes. It took a long time to come up with this little sketch, didn't it? Yeah, just a little bit. It's not too bad. Twitch question, do you have any tips for drawing without guidelines? I don't know what that means. Drawing without guidelines. I don't understand. For the uh, mirror, do you have it locked to a uh, hotkey? No. Did you just drop one? No. I just <laughs> 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 Actually, you know, I want to I want to make his expression bigger. Hey, Aaron and Dustin, how do you decide what will be the live stream subject of of the week? Um, most of the time, we're sitting there right before the live stream starts, going, "Hey, what are we going to do today?" <laughs> Would you be willing to draw a centaur in the future for a stream? For some reason, it is tough to put a man and a horse together. Yes, but I'm going to do the top part horse and the bottom part human. <laughs> <laughs> no, what I think you should do is still make a centaur, but make only the head a human head. No. It, like a human head with a horse body, not... I got gotcha. you. <laughs> See how that works. Figure that one out. Have you got uh, wrist supports for your mouse and keyboard? No. I also use an ergonomic cushion on my chair. Nope. YouTube question, what is your favorite Disney horse character? I love uh, the horse Entangled. What's his name? Um, He's my Maximus? favorite. Maximus? Maximus, yeah. Good job, Dustin. Oh, pulled that one out of your hat. But the horse in Sleeping Beauty is great, too. It's one of the most beautifully animated horses. Mm -hmm. Once again, that was probably Milk Hall. Yeah, the horse in, um, in Tangle, though, has a lot 
of personality. Oh, incredible amount. Like my favorite facial reactions of, of that horse is probably um, when he's trying trying to balance on on the uh, on the log when he's trying to get the the, the bag. Yeah, it's like the first the first time you see see Maximus. Have you? Oh, now I asked the question. I found myself there. Um, <laughs> uh, guidelines. Nick says guidelines are snap to grid. You don't use them. I don't use them. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not. I don't know how to give advice on that because it's not something I use. I'm not familiar with it. Sorry. Uh, YouTube question: Have uh, Have you ever worked for or with Pixar? I've worked with Pixar, not for. You know, when when uh, when I was still at Disney, that's when Disney bought Pixar, and so we ended up critiquing each other's projects, and uh, we got to be friends. John Lasseter was my boss, who was the head of Pixar at the time. And talking about um, the drunk live stream, that'd be a heck of a thing. Uh, an Aaron Blaze drunk live stream takes a shot every time Aaron makes a drawing mistake. <laughs> Oops, made oh. another mistake. Time to take another what shot. What do you mean mistake? No one would ever be drunk. <laughs> I don't make mistakes. Oops, man. Another mistake because I'm <laughs> drunk, Dustin. Take another shot. <laughs> Twitch question. Any tips on animating a character? Oh, I already read that one. Do you recommend taking your character creation or storyboarding course first? I plan or, or storyboarding of course first. I plan to take both. The goal being uh, being producing my own animations as a hobby. I would do character creation first because I believe that you should be a good character artist and designer. You know, if you if you can be um, when you're storyboarding, bringing that into your storyboarding. I think storyboard artists have to be some of the best artists on the picture. Aaron doesn't make mistakes. Mistakes make Aaron. What, what, wait a minute, what? <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> that don't mean the whole thing. What animated shot are you most proud of that you've worked, that you've done? Yeah, the probably the beast uh, and Bell arguing in front of the fireplace. I talk about it all the time. It's one of my one of my more standout memories of working at Disney and big opportunities and, and whatnot. Whatnot. And something smells really good. I think Vedanta's cooking. Oh, definitely ain't my feet. That's what I need. Now back to here. Back to our regular schedule program. I work with horses and I'm good at That's awesome. <laughs> can, 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 can I finish? Speak? Good at drawing them. Just not as good as you are. Somehow I don't remember what a horse looks like when I pick up a pencil. Does your brain do that too sometimes? Yeah, I mean... It's for certain things, but the more you get to understand and, and know a, 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 the anatomy of different animals, the more natural it'll come natural it will come to you.
Aaron, how was your short trip to see your little brother Travis? It was great. We had a great time. Got to uh, see Seattle. I've never been to Seattle before. The con the confrontation scene you were uh, you're talking about is that the go ahead and starve scene, or is that the uh, the cleaning his wound scene? Cleaning his wound. That hurt. That hurt. I animated that whole. You should have never been to the gone to the West Wing. Exactly. And that's where uh, I spent. A month story uh, uh, thumbnailing that whole sequence. I did. I just did uh, Beast. I didn't do Bell. Mark Hen did Bell. I always like getting a little story, a little bit of story in the. Just a wee bit. Just a wee bit. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. Have you seen Over the Moon? If so, what did you think of it? I liked it. Yes, I saw it. I liked it. I like it a lot. Did you see the glass museum in Seattle? Yes, I did. Chihuly, the Chihuly Glass Museum. I loved it. I got some really cool photos there, actually. For the confrontation scene, did you videotape? Video type? Did you videotape yourself doing it? No, not on that one. No, that one I pretty much just felt my way through it. And did you ever meet uh, David Ogden uh, Steers or any of the other voice talents? No, I, I met Robbie Benson, who is the voice of the Beast. Uh, oh, actually, I want to remind you guys, for those of you that are just coming on, uh, came in late, I, um, I December 12th, I'm doing a live uh, workshop event. And I uh, would love for you to join us. If you go to creatureartteacher.com slash live, uh, you get more information there. But it's um, I'm going to be talking about animal character design, specifically doing designs with dogs. And then we're going to do some animation. And I'm going to do it on paper. So I'm really excited about that. And uh, I hope you guys can join me. The, 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 uh, it's a limited... Um, it's limited uh, number of tickets because uh, I want to be able to answer questions for everybody. And so we're limiting it to 300 folks, 300 people. So there you go. Nice. So go to creatureartteacher.com slash live and you'll get all the information there. Man, I love drawing horses. I know, right? Yeah. And um, when it comes to uh, when it comes to voices, do do any of the animators, uh, specifically the um, the head an uh, uh, the lead animator, meet the voice voice actor just to understand their personality or anything? Sometimes, or? not necessarily to understand their personality, because it's really the the personality of the of the story of the character. of the story of the character that you're trying to get across. But um, yeah, I mean, I've I've met I've met pretty much all the characters I've ever animated all the people i think my personal favorite um story of that is meeting uh george takei yes <laughs> i said hello mr takei and he goes actually it's takei it rhymes with okay <laughs> i said sorry the name's takei it rhymes with okay yeah he was very nice he was awesome I like meeting Harvey Firestein. Harvey, Fire, Harvey Firestein, the voice of Yao. Oh. He was awesome. Is he the... He was also... Um, 
I got their first I gotta, Independence Day. Yeah, I gotta call my mother. <laughs> I got. <laughs> oh, I gotta call my lawyer. Oh, forget my lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Why did I just send my mother to Atlanta? He's in uh, Mrs. Doubtfire. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember any of his lines in that movie. Though. I just remember his voice being in, in there. I know he's the uh, costume designer. He's his brother. Yeah. All oh, right. Do you ever have any tips for students putting together a portfolio? Are there any key things professionals look for when reviewing student work? Yes. You are going to be putting yourself out there against other people. So you need to put your best foot forward. You really do. What's your advice for... Hold on, I'm still talking. Oh, sorry. That's okay. And, um, you know, and, and it really depends on what you're, what you're uh, um, interviewing for, right? So you want to make sure your portfolio is geared towards that. And make sure that your portfolio is geared towards the style of the studio that you're looking to go into. You know, if you're looking to go in and get a spot on the Simpsons staff, you know, you got to, or if, you want, if you're looking to get a, a spot at Disney, don't give them Simpson drawings. You know, that sort of thing. And put your absolute best, for, best uh, work first. Don't make them work to, 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 to get it because... Often I was part of the review board, and often I want if I if I've got one lunch that I have to go to, you know, usually it was once a month we'd have lunch and we would do review board, and we would have let's say fifty portfolios, and I've got to I've got to go through all those portfolios in one lunch, and then get back to my job, get back to work because I have to make quota. You better make sure that that portfolio is going to grab me right away. And so you want to get your best work in there. Don't put walk cycles in there. Don't put your first year stuff in there, you know. And if you're if you're coming in as a say a a character designer, then put character designs in. You know, don't put some oil painting of a still life that you did in college in. And that would that normally will suffice. What's your advice for on-site live sketching? Um, keep it loose. Look at the gesture. Um, don't try. Don't go right into the details right away. I mean, look how long it's taken me. This isn't live sketching, but to find the the pose, and that's what you can do with live uh, sketching. Look how long it took me to find the pose just today. I know, right? You know, keeping and I kept it loose. Keep got blah, blah, blah. I kept it loose. <laughs> hey, there's our horses. All right, dear, but that's kind of fun. I like horses. Hey, Lee, Kersey. Twitch comment. Fun fact. Mrs. Potts was voiced by Angela Lounsbury. Lansbury, who also performed as Mrs. Lovett in Sweeney Todd. If you listen to the original Broadway cast of Sweeney Todd, you get to hear Mrs. Potts singing about dismembering and cooking people. <laughs> That's pretty cool. Poor Chip. There. I'm digging this. So one of the things I did, you know, to get this idea across, notice how I put all the kind of thrust of the composition with the two of them leading right up to his face and his expression and her being nice and sly. <laughs> In the mirror. Anatomy wise, what does a horse's uh, hoof e equate to a human's hand or finger? It's a finger. It's a finger. It is a finger. There are vestigial bones, but it's it's literally sorry, I'm not flipping the bird at you, but it's uh it's the middle finger. And so the horse hoof is the fingernail. The um the uh uh this bend right here, right in here, that bend is the wrist. So that's here. And, and then just then, make a circle around the uh yeah sorry 
So, so there's your fingernail. That's the wrist. There's the elbow. Right there. So here's the elbow right here. Here's her wrist. And then there's the hand, all the metatarsal, and, and then down into the finger and fingernail. Or this is, all of this is finger right here. You know, people think that. And the upper that, arm, the upper arm is all up in here from basically here. It's a big, thick upper arm. So that, so that whole lower portion of the leg, that's not even leg at all. That's just a, that's just one long finger. Yep. Basically. Yep. I always thought that that was a leg and that, well, it is and a, that I ball mean, point I, is a knee. But every four legged, every uh, uh, hoofed animal, that's basically what it is. Huh. I just learned something new. You learn something new every day. <laughs> the more you learn, the more you know. My gosh. My gosh. All right. Join me next uh, next week. Yeah, so I, I said that already, right? Yeah. Yeah. For the, uh, the the workshop live stream. Yeah. Oops, that's not what I want. I want this. What do you think about tattoo art? I love tattoo art. Good tattoo. As a matter of fact, I've been hooked on uh, what's that tattoo show where they it's the contest. Um, uh, something ink with uh, LA ink. What's that? No, it's not. It's um, LA ink's more reality show. Isn't it? Yeah. Uh, what's his name? Hosts it. But. Anyway, Either way, sorry. I remember watching um, a few few years back. I remember watching a, a different show where it wasn't um, it wasn't any tattoo show. It was it was a, a competition on building um, building hot rods. Oh yeah, uh, basically. And the host of the show was Zulu. What? Yeah. Really? Yeah, it was Zulu because you know how he lo he loves those kinds of cars, like those classic, yeah, classic fifties style cars. Yeah, and that and that show was all all about that, like those those like old fashioned hot hot rods. What show was like, this on? I mean, what channel was this um, on? I can't remember. I think it was on. It was either on Netflix or I just saw. How am I just now YouTube. knowing this? How, you never told me this before. That's cool. I thought I did. I don't remember that. No, I'd, I'd in remember. case anybody's wondering, Zulu is the uh, the artist that did the tattoo for uh, for for Dad on his shoulder. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And uh, and of course, Zulu was all was always looking super fly in his like per oh yeah purple suit with with uh, bowler hats. Of course. Yeah, he's a very style. He's, he's got style. super. He's super stylish. <laughs> and also amazing artist yeah he's great and a super super nice guy yeah if you're ever interested look up Zulu Tattoo Z-U-L-U -U, Zulu Tattoo he came to our studio years ago and uh, gave us a lecture on the art of tattooing you know uh, the studio would bring in various artists to give lectures on, di on different disciplines. And so, um, and I, this is right after uh, Dustin's mother had passed away, my wife, and I was looking to get a tattoo of her done. And, uh, and he came to the studio and we discovered that um, he went to Ringling, which is where I went to school. He, uh, um, he lived right in town. There's, oh, actually I want to do this. Um, just a lot of different things that that were really coincidental. It was really cool. And so um, when I got together with him, he had about a year long waiting list uh, to get a tattoo from him. And uh, but we, I was directing a movie called King of the Elves at the time. And uh, so they got a tour of the studio and I took them through my section on King of the Elves and was explaining to him, you know, the whole story about how my wife had just passed away a few months earlier and I was looking to get a tattoo of her. And, and so he, and I explained to him that I'd gone to Ringling and it was really cool that we had all these, uh, coincidences. 
And uh, and so he he said, you know what, my schedule's full at the shop, but why don't you come to my house this weekend, and uh, and I'll we'll do it then. And uh, and I told him I already had a a design created, and he was really cool about that. And uh, so we showed up, and he told me to bring some of Karen's ashes, and um, and we brought her favorite music and pictures, and we put them up all over the house while we did the tattoo, but he also put her ashes in with the ink so that she's in my arm. And that was super emotional and really super cool. And he's just, you know, we just had a, a amazing, really spiritual day that day. It was very, very cool. And, uh, and so I'm always in debt to Zulu because he, he gave me something really, really special. He's a super cool dude. On the um, the tattoo contest we were talking about, the game show, Ink Masters. Oh, Ink Masters. Yes, that's it. Thank you. And I've watched like two seasons of it. I've, got, I've just recently discovered it. I mean, I've known about it, but I was never really interested. And I just happened to start watching it because there was nothing else on. And I'm totally hooked. Man, I think my my best experience with um when it came to meeting Zulu was um yeah I know what you're going the drag the dragonfly yeah yeah because I think it was what a few months before um yeah. uh, uh my sister Austin myself and uh, both of our grand grandmothers from both sides went to a tat tattoo place to get uh, a dragonfly on each of us yeah because Karen Karen loved dragonflies. And I got a tattoo, and I got a dragonfly tattoo on the on my uh, right side sh uh, shoulder blade, and it's angled um, uh, up to the to the side. And, uh, and a few months later, Dad has his appointment with Zulu, and uh, and Zulu allowed Dad to bring Austin and I along. And so we go and we and we're all hanging out playing some Amos Lee music. We're just having fun conversations and and the tattoos uh, came up and Dad wanted me to show show mine. So I pulled my shirt up to show mine and he just and Zulu just looks at me and goes, "You gotta be kidding me!" And he takes his shirt off and in the exact same spot, but just in his own style, it was his own version of a dragonfly. Yeah, pretty cool. Like we had matching. Dragonfly tattoos, but from different makers. Like what? <laughs> but in the same spot, which is really yeah, cool. Yeah, same spot. I think even the same size. Yeah, they were. Just this was more like, almost like demonic tribal. It wasn't kind demonic. Of, not demonic, but yeah. but it had a lot of a lot of extra stylized. curves. Yeah, very stylized, very tribal stylized. I didn't yeah. mean demonic, but but it's very very cool design. Yeah. Oh yeah, his website is RonnieZulu.com. R O N I Z Z U L U. Thanks, Nick. Ronnie Zulu. Do we see the tattoo if it's not too personal? I did it in the style of of uh Mucha. Alphonse Mucha because it's it's been years now, so it's a little bit faded. Can you see it? that good so i did yeah. it in the style oh that's right i'm on the wrong side it's a portrait and it's done in the style of alphonse Muka, and it's a portrait of karen and she had dreads so we did the, all the dreads and everything i don't know how well you can see them but um and then and then right at the top right along here it says, keep on living. I love you all. That was the last thing she said to us. And then there it's, and we did it all in one sitting. You can see how all the dreads and everything. And she had uh, little beads in her hair. And she's wearing dragonfly earrings because she loved dragonflies so much. And that's her profile. So there you go. There you go. And she's in the ink. 
Yeah, that was something that he, that uh that he said for you to bring was uh, uh her ashes, right? Yep. Yeah. When he said that, were, were you like, wait, what? <laughs> yeah, I was really surprised that he could do something like that. Sorry for the shake, folks. Just trying to get this all situated. Much better, much better. Much more better. <laughs> when you were at Disney, did you ever use caps for inking and painting? Yes, we did. Caps was our our proprietary software that we used for inking and painting. I didn't use it, but the caps department did. So now, I want to get her mane in there. Is it hot in here? Man, it's hot in here. Oh, you know why? We still got all the doors open. So mm -hmm. it's like about 80 degrees in here. I opened up the doors because it was nice and cool this morning. Starting, I think it might be starting to warm up a little bit. Oh, what they're saying is 69. Nice. So it is a little, still a little, slightly chilled. Uh, no new questions yet. Okay, I'm just drawing. I'm just going to shut up and draw for a little bit and just go into a Zen mode. Okay. Okay. Okay, that sounds good. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter. Hey, Peter, I think you should meet her. He might make a good leader. What tablet do you use? Well, you see, you? it's like this. See, it's a little something like I'm this. using a Wacom Cintiq 32 Pro. Okay. 
Can you see it from? Do you have a camera view of it? Yeah, it is show. It's in fact showing your. Yeah, so you can see it right here. It is. Go to a big view of it. Yeah, this. So I have. It's nice and big. I like using a large Cintiq. It enables me to. Draw really large. Dustin, where's your where's your tattoo? It's on the uh, it's on my shoulder shoulder blade to the right, but in order to show it, I would need basically need to take my shirt off. It's a good opportunity for me to take my shirt off. Uh, Miss Schoenberg, uh, I think that would be a good opportunity for me to take my shirt off. All right, all right. <laughs> all right, so let's do a little bit of this here. Let's uh, start burying up some of these text yours. What is, what is the light source going to be coming from? I'm not sure yet. We're going to make it come from the top. But I'm probably off to one side. If you could only taste one thing, like one particular taste for the rest of your life, what taste would you would you go for? What what would you taste? The taste of durian fruit. Durian fruit? <laughs> Kidding. You don't know what durian fruit is, do you? Nope. It's a stinky stinky i had it when i was in singapore it smells like garbage mm. it smells so bad but then you eat it and it's really good mm. yep so is that your answer no i would uh something savory like savory flavors that's mm. what i would rather have the rest of my life I'm not a big sweet sweets guy i would probably Maybe say like socks. a ju like a juicy steak like a juicy seasoned steak sounds tasty. <laughs> I like giving him light feet. Two minutes ago, it was uh, 20 hours, 20 minutes, and 20 seconds on the 20th of November 2020 in Europe. Oh, really? <laughs> That's pretty cool. A lot of twenties. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. All right. I rate it eight point five out of ten. Let's let's start now. Let's uh, let's do this. Let's gonna I'm gonna combine these layers. Aaron, what is your favorite food? <laughs> My favorite food. Oh my gosh, that's a that's a tough question because if I see food, I eat it. Mm -hmm. There we go. Let's go with that. Oh no, let's do this. I'm going to knock this way back. I like having it underneath. I like seeing a little bit of the underdrawing. And let's do. Let's set this to multiply. That feels kind of good. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then that's let's, good. Uh, let's create a new layer. And I'm going to click on it. Whoops. What did I just do? Oh, I got to do this and create a clipping mask. And I'm going to set that to multiply. Multiply. So, seafood? <laughs> yeah, Nick knows I love seafood. <laughs> I went sat down and... Put away a couple dozen clams, a couple dozen mussels, some oysters, fish, uh, lobster. Uh, I can't remember crab. I know I put some crab away. It was a uh, it was a gluttonous experience to say the least. <laughs> More of this.
There we go. Getting some shadows in here. A hill, hill, hill. I've been watching some of your courses over the last week and really got a kick out of seeing how your studio workspace has evolved. Yeah, man, it's really come together. I've been lucky. <laughs> Crabs are just sea spiders. They are, and they're delicious. I've been trying to be a little bit more vegan lately. And uh, that's doing better. The which one? Trying to be a little more vegan. Ah. Hello there. Hello there. Don't like that one, so I'm just going to do this. I'll create a clipping mask. I'm going to go warm on the shadows. And I can add cools later. I'll go a little bit lighter. Was Nick making a pun with seafood? Because you said, I, I see food, I eat it. Well, there's definitely that. And uh, he probably was. He was probably teasing me, you know, like he does. He's That's super right. mean to me. <laughs> I don't know why I put up with it. Mom, he's mean to me. <laughs> Which animal did you learn the most of uh, ana anatomic ways? Which, say that again? Which animal did you learn the most of uh, uh, it's animatic ways? Anatomic? An anatomic? Anatomic. You having trouble? I, I am. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think basically what I'm asking is uh, which which animal have you studied the anatomy of the most? Like what? oh, um, probably bears and lions, big cats in general, horses, dogs. It's everything. What? It, which one? Birds. <laughs> it's hard to say, you know, because I've I take them to the point where I know how to draw them from my mind. From my mind. Oh, here I'm just adding shadow using a clipping mask. Thinking about the light coming down from above. <laughs> well, I must say it's a beautiful stream as always, but I've got to eat my pasta. So I'll catch you guys later. Love oh, you all. there you go. There's a favorite food. Oh, yeah. Especially, I love making homemade pasta. I love creating the pasta, bringing it through the pasta maker. Drawing is like pasta. Laying it all out. Yeah, man. That's right. We put together a whole video on how drawing is like pasta. Why do you think I'm so fat? <laughs> I love the pasta. Love the pasta. Oh, poor little guy. <laughs> eating cup. Maybe Nick is mean because he has to live in the closet. <laughs> have you tried florida stone crab i heard it's the bomb um you know what i used to trap stone crab we we had them in our family we used to catch uh lots of stone crab and um i don't like st uh, stone crab uh as much as i like cold water crab stone crab is a warm water crab and the texture is a little bit more coarse the meat texture is more coarse and i'm not crazy about it and it's a fair amount of work to get into the claws um it's not bad don't get me wrong uh but uh snow crab and king crab which is my absolute favorite dungeness but any of the cold water crabs tend to be a little sweeter Did you hear about the Italian chef? He passed away. <laughs> that was a stretch there. For the beast, which animal is he inspired from? Oh, there's a whole bunch. There's Take a pick. A, a bison. 
uh, wild boar, wolf, um, yeah, there's a whole bunch in there. At one time, he was going to look like a mandrel. Glenn had done some really cool drawings of him inspired by a mandrel that I always wish that could have been a little bit more like, because it was, it was so cool. I think it was a little too specific for everybody. What was the most challenging part of horse anatomy for you to master, and what is your biggest tip for drawing horses? Um, you know, the, there's nothing, it's not any harder than any other animal. You just, there's just certain proportions you got to remember. You know, you got to think about how those front legs work, how those back legs are constructed. You know, all of that, it's, it's no different than, it's no harder than, or easier than having to memorize the anatomy of a cat or a dog. It's just, you got to remember how they're, there's specific ways that they are put together. You know, I've, I've got my entire course, if you're interested, at creatureartteacher.com. There's no, it's hard to say like one thing. It, there is no one thing. They all, it all goes together and it's just, it's memorizing it all together that, that, um, takes time. Rene, your questions. What? What? How, how could you? I'm doing purely character. I haven't put any environment in at all. Nothing? Nothing. <coughs> I gotta put an environment in. Who came up with the design of the beast? Was it only one artist or several? No, just one, Glenn Keane. Glenn Keane, my mentor. Would you suggest watching videos uh, of animals in order to better draw them? Yes. Yeah, if you can't if you can't find them in person, then the next best thing is to watch videos. Try to avoid photographs. Because photographs lie, you know, they, you'll interpret something the wrong way because it's only two dimensions. And yes, a video is only two dimensions as well, but at least it's turning. The animal is usually turning in space and you get a better sense of what's going on from a anatomy standpoint. Aaron, would you ever own a horse? I have owned a horse. When I was a kid, I had a horse named Rebel. Nice. He was awesome. I used to ride him bareback all over the place. And um, I love that horse because we, we, I would just take off from the house in the morning and wouldn't come back until afternoon. And uh, he's thrown me. He threw me a couple times as uh, when I first got him. But we, we finally got an understanding. I remember one time he threw me. I was in a full gallop going down the dirt road. And he threw me in full gallop. And I hit the ground going about 25, 30 miles an hour on my head. Mm -hmm. And I remember when I came, when I rolled over, all the color had been distorted. All the, my sense of color. So the, the sky was green and everything was just all out of whack. It was crazy. You all right there, Dustin? Yeah, I'm good. Crazy. So what I've done is I've created a new layer on top and I've just set it to, uh, I've 
created a clipping mask on top and I've set it to overlay so I can kind of do some highlights just like I did with the shadows where I set it to multiply. I do the same thing here by doing it with overlay. And then we'll just throw some paint right over the top. Some color. Oh, I forgot to put shadows on, on both of their tails. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, dear. How do you learn drawing a cartoon eye? Well, there's all there's hundreds of different ways of drawing cartoon eyes. Just gotta take your pick. Just gotta take your pick, son. You just gotta choose your poison. For me, when I'm drawing eyes, I think of them as radiating out from a central point, and that helps with it, with expression. So, for instance, if I want to draw an eye, a cartoon eye, a lot of times I'm I still think about an eyelid there's a little highlight there so I still think about you know I give it a thickness back here to indicate kind of lashes and there's the corner of the eye and corner of the eye. So I'm thinking about the bottom of the eye. But notice how everything kind of radiates out from this central point. You got the pupil and the eye and the, or the iris and then the, the eye itself. And then going way out, out here, you'll see the eyebrow. And it all kind of comes together like so. Here's our highlight, maybe a little highlight down below, the white of the eye, back here. Remember the white of the eye isn't always white. But there's a cartoon eye. All right, let's get back to it. Back to it. What have we lost people, huh? Lost questions. What are your questions? We need more. They don't they don't like us anymore, Dustin. Oh no. Oh no. Maybe for the background have them both at a at a lake with the pine forest scenery. Well, how about no? <laughs> I'm gonna, I'll come up with something simple. I'm really just focusing on character on this one. Yeah. This has been fun though. I like, I love doing little character bits like this. Specifically with hearses. What's that? Specifically with hearses. 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 So once again, I want to remind you guys to join me on December 12th for my live workshop on designing and uh, designing for animation uh, animals, specifically dogs in this case. And uh, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're going to do the design work and then the afternoon we're going to sit down and I'm going to animate for a couple of hours. And uh, it's going to be great. It's going to be it's going to be great. I was going to say, it's going to be huge, but I don't want to sound like Trump. <clears throat> there we 
go, there we go, there we go. When you have a character like a beast that is sort of like a mashup of different animals, uh, whose anatomies work quite differently, how is the process of figuring out how to animate his movements? Well, the one thing you do have for working for you with something like that is what's called comparative anatomy. Even though the anatomy is quite different, the way that, uh, not the way, but um, we all have the same parts from animal to animal, especially with mammals. We basically all have the same parts. They're just shaped differently. A whale and a bat and a dog and a human, we all have the same parts. We all have the same muscles and bones and everything else. It's just that they, they over time, have evolved into different shapes to suit their needs in the environment. And so, sorry, I'm just trying to get this done here. And so when it comes to that, and you can remember that, then uh, it makes it easier to get in there and... There we go, there, right there. I'm trying to get some of these holes. There we go. It makes it easier to figure out how you're going to um, change it or, or mash them together because you'll know that this part goes with this part, even though they're shaped differently. And so uh, that's how you're going to end up with um, more of a, there we go, a more bubbly, a bl 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 believable, <laughs> believable character design. Believable. Do you guys have any plans for the holidays yet? Well, we're going to be with our, our, our my daughter, and Dustin. Hi. Um, the COVID thing is getting a little out of hand, so we've got some other people coming in that uh, we'll probably keep our distance. We'll definitely keep our distance. But um, there we go. But it's gonna be it's gonna be a nice holiday. Sorry, I'm uh I'm trying to look at my colors here to make sure I'm using the right ones. Hey Aaron. Hey, what's going on? How's it going, e? What was the best question you ever asked another artist that had a great answer? <laughs> I have no idea. I mean, I've gotten wonderful critiques from people that were really honest with me when, my, when I was young and really told me that I had a lot to learn and were very blunt with me. And I love telling those stories. Um, I had a, I had a, uh, the head of a, a studio, a print studio, where I wanted to do wildlife prints. And I thought it was pretty good. This is when I was 18 and I was getting ready to go off to college and I was going to learn how to do all this you know, but I wanted to see if I could get my prints in with this place before I got into college. And the guy said, basically, that my stuff doesn't even equal their garbage. And uh, I could draw pretty good, but I got to go to college and learn as much as I could. But he was really cool. He said, you know, when you when you go, learn what you can, then come back and see me, and maybe we'll you know we'll we'll do something. And uh, ultimately, my I ended up with Disney instead of doing prints. But uh. But I love telling that story. <laughs> YouTube question. In a 2D, 2D animation portfolio, should shots be in full color or just fully in between? They don't even have to be fully in between as long as they're drawn well and they're... Uh, um, uh, clear. You know, they don't even have to be fully in between. Have you thought about creating any drawing challenges or prompts? No. I just want to teach it, baby. We might do that at some point. Well, that sounds more like a Tom Bancroft kind of thing. There we go. Just putting in a fairly simple 
environment. <laughs> then we're going to use my foliage brushes. Your foliage. My foliages. Foliage. G G G G G G G G G G G G G. All right, let's go back to the horses, shall we? Because I'm going to do some shadows and things like that later on that are going to work. Shadows. Sounds like a plan. Shadows. Shadows like a plan, man. I'm not going to render this out completely, but I do want to get some some fun stuff here. Like, let's go a little cooler. Three hours later. Also, I want to remind you that for this weekend only, my uh, Your, my big my big cat course, my how to draw big cats course, is uh, on sale for only fifteen dollars. It's the lowest that it's ever been. That's just crazy talk. I know, right? I know, right? Got my guy in there. Making fun of me? No. Are you making fun of me? <laughs> yes. Just a little. Just a little bit. Just a little bit. <laughs> so here I'm just doing a little reflected light on this horse. A little coolness. Just a little, just giving this a little uh, cartoon style. Not too worried about turning this into a rendered image. When you do horse characters, do you keep the pupils in their eyes horizontal, uh, anatomically, anatomically correct, uh, or do you do a round pupil like you illustrated earlier? I, I, um, if I'm doing it as a character, I'll do it as a round pupil because we're not used to seeing an uh, uh, expression in those horizontal pupils. Poor guy. What is that? He's coughing. Mm -hmm. He's old. If you must make art explain in five steps, what would what would they be? <laughs> Sketch like such as like sketching or there is no or... formula. There's no. It doesn't happen that way. Yeah. Well, so for this, if, okay, but I'll, yeah, I'll 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 take your challenge. So for me, when I do this, I do a rough sketch, then I do a refined sketch, then I do local color, and then um, and then I find my shadows, I find my highlights, and then I start refining the color within the shadows uh, and the highlights. So I start branching out. So I'm finding reflected light, you know, things like that. It's actually kind of fun here. Get into the fun part. We having fun yet? Having fun yet, there, partner? That's a re reflected green on his belly. Hello, partner. Well, 
what to do when there's a thousand things I want to draw and I can't choose which one to do today. Just pick one. Just pick it. Yeah, just get a dartboard and just put sticky notes all around the dartboard with with different different <laughs> things you want to draw written on each one. Then just randomly throw the dart. Yeah. See where it lands. Do you do fishing? I used to fish. I don't fish much anymore. This is fun. This yeah. is a fun one. They're currently out of... Uh... Yeah, I'm just... This one's kind of meandering. Why not fishing and drawing? What's that? Why not fishing and drawing? Why not fishing and drawing? Yeah. You, you just asked me if I fish. I don't yeah. fish. Well, why not? Why do you not fish? What's I got to do with drawing? I don't know. <laughs> why? Why do you? I just I guess don't why do you it. Draw more than I don't like fish. killing fish, first of all, and and uh, uh, I just don't find I don't find it enjoyable anymore. Because I mean, I, it's okay to be out there, but I don't I don't like killing the fish, and I don't like hurting them. I know I still eat eat fish, but I don't want to be the one to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you you don't want to be the I'm fish a hypocrite. Job. Yeah. Now, if your life depended on it. Of course. How do you avoid burnout? I get burnt out so quickly. I get, get a few commissions, orders, and die after the first one. Tips? I just love what I do. I don't. I never get burned out. Go and do other things, I guess. I've been doing this for 30, 35 years. I've never gotten sick of it. I love it. Come on. There we go. The five steps of art. Dip, dodge, duck, dive, and dodge. <laughs> what is it? Dive? Or no, dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. Yeah. Five words of dodgeball. <laughs> dodge, duck, dip, dive, and dodge. If you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball. <laughs> <laughs> Are you familiar with the watercolor illustrator, uh, Jerry Pink Pinkney? Pinkney? Not that I know of. Uh, winner of both uh Caldecott and uh, Coretta Scott King Awards. That's awesome. Jerry Nope. I will though. I will look look this person up. Already done.
There he is. Oh, cool. I was not aware of this person. What role do you think artists play in society as a whole? I think we, if we do our job right, we get people to see the world in a different light, in a different way. We get to show the poetry of what's around us everywhere. You get to show the people things that they might see every day, but not see them in the way that an artist might see them. And you can expose them to that. Show them that there's beauty everywhere, no matter what. But really, to get the world to see and think differently. To see a different perspective. That's our job. To see a different perspective. As artists. Would you ever consider directing a TV show? No. Not really. I um let me put this up here. There we go. I uh I really love what I do uh now. And um I would really need something to pull me you know, television isn't something I I guess it depends on the subject. It really does. I really, I love what I do right now. And so it would take a lot to pull me away. What are you thinking of when you're drawing hair? Like what goes through your mind when you're drawing that stuff? Shapes. I think about big shapes first and then I break them down. Have you seen wolf walkers? If the... This second animation industry picks up again, or no, if the second animation industry picks up again, uh, can you see yourself going back to work, or are you happy as an art, art teacher? I'm not. I've never left work. There is no. Go, what do you mean going back to work? This is my work. This is what I do. You probably mean going back to a studio, but I, I consciously left the studio. I didn't want to. I didn't want to be part of the studios anymore. I've been part of I had been part of it for 21 years and I wanted to do something different. I wanted to share um my experiences. Really, that's what that was the start of Creature Art Teacher. Um but I don't know where you're going with Wolfwalkers, but um and and, and I misread the uh <laughs> it's not second it's 2D animation. Oh, I I yeah, misread. But I misread Nick and I part. Nick and I were at Cartoon Saloon um a meeting with Tom Moore and his crew uh last year and uh really loved that place really loved it and I'm very excited about wolf walkers wolf walker Industrial sketch. There we go. In industrial sketching. Is it the same principle or is it something else? I think industrial sketching, you're still going to have to think about composition and, you know, you're talking about, uh, I'm assuming, more hard shapes and less organic, but it's still you have to think about design and everything else. So I would assume, although I've never really done it, it's pretty much this, you know, you're, you're following the same guidelines for a good piece, you know. Wolfwalkers is, uh, Nick was saying, Nick, Wolfwalkers is playing in theaters now, although I'm sure it's very limited. Um, but it's going to be released on Apple TV. It's in December. I know that. Um, I can't remember when in December it's coming out. Question to both Dustin and Aaron. Uh, what does it mean to you to be surrounded by a family of creators? 
I love it because I, that's how it's always been for me. I've never had it any other way. And um, so sharing, you know, Dustin, I know Dustin's never had it any other way because his mother and I were, we, we were both artists. So it's pretty cool. And I do my fair share of, of, of art such as like my photography and my, and my other art elsewhere. And, and I'm always showing my stuff to him and he always shows stuff to me. So it's, and so we're always sharing and improving our stuff uh, with each other. Yeah. It's a lot of fun. A style you're currently drawing is is there a name to describe this style of painting? Uh, no, I mean it's, I'm it's just, somewhere between realistic and cartoon. Yeah, I mean I'm just doing that's basically what I'm doing is cartoon, realistic cartoon. Yeah, real tune, real tune. For some reason, this brush is not nearly as opaque as it usually is. I'm having to really work it a lot. I wonder if there's some kind of change. I mean, it works the same. But it's just not as opaque. If I start, I start randomly rem remembering the um, from Wizard of Oz, the the green painted horse. Yeah. In in the land of Oz. Uh-huh. Yep. I wonder how much paint you had to go go through to paint the horses up yeah, like that. I don't and, know. I, and I really hope that, that the Did, paint was didn't hurt the horse. Yeah, I'm really hoping that didn't hurt him. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it was fine. Well, I mean the the guy who played as um uh Tin Man? Tin Man. Yeah, well, he, that was the silver thing that he got sick from. Yeah. I just wonder if they were using, enough, like, another form of paint that that they don't, that they didn't know was, uh, was a risk. Oh, I don't know. So. Having fun here. Or so a different color. It kept changing color. My guess is it was done with light on a white on a white horse. I can see that. Oh, and the one you're talking about? Yeah, the the horses uh, in the Wizard of Oz scene. Yeah. Like when when they first make it into the town. Mm hmm Because come to think of it, come yeah, to think the, of it. Come to think of it. Yeah, either yeah, either they shined a different light onto that on the horse. Specifically, like a almost like a spotlight, or they the or they just painted it after every shot, like just different take was a different color. Well, that's a horse of a different color. There we go. So once again, this weekend only, our Big Cat course is on sale for $15. That's a big savings. $15. $15. For this weekend only. we got a whole bunch of different sales coming up. But uh, let me turn this around. Foliage. Foliage brushes. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what I want to do. Bring them down and darken them. Too dark. I 
at that. These foliage brushes come in handy. I'm going to fly through this. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. Oh, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. Why not? That's all messed up. I don't know why that's doing that. Curious. How would you <laughs> handle spots or fur color transitions in this style? What's that? How would you handle spots or fur color transitions in this style um i i would put that in the local color layer there we go We're going to get lots of little foliages and whatnot. Our foliage brush set is uh, its just $2 right now at Creature Art Teacher, by the way. So you can get all these brushes that I'm using right now. All of these, that you see on the, on the left. Gotta make these really big. Have you ever binge watched the James Gurney YouTube channel? Never binge watched it, but I really love his uh, his channel. James Gurney is one of my favorite artists. The man is a genius. Genius. <laughs> Are you still doing the animals farm course? The Still farm doing animals what? course? Farm animals? Yeah. Course yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I, yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yes. We'll do that eventually. So let's do foreground now. Do you prefer family entertainment or adult entertainment? Both. I like them both. Just has to be good, that's all. You look how fast we can get some nice textures in here. We'll try different blend modes. Right now I'm just laying down a base texture. There we go. I'm going to put a layer on top and I'm going to set that to multiply and we're going to put uh, a little blue, a little dark blue there, and we're going to do a gradient. Make it feel a little darker down there. There we go. That feels a little better. There's our little horsies. <laughs> Let's go back. Do something underneath. I'm going to do some, uh, let's see, let's do, go back to our foliage. Oh, these are nice shapes. I like these. Oops. Can you do a color pencils class? Hey, you know what? That is a great idea. I love that idea. Yes. I used to work exclusively in colored pencil when I was young. There we 
we go. See there? Get some nice things happening here. I love working with these foliage brushes because it just makes it so easy. <laughs> the guy reading the questions should read, should read audiobooks. <laughs> That's you, Pally. That's me, Pally. Which way did you go, Pally? Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pull that one, pull that one, pull that one. We're going to put a layer on top. Now I'm going to make these big ones. What is your favorite comedy movie? Uh, probably The Big Lebowski. Uh, that's like your opinion, man. <laughs> it is my opinion, man. But he should read them like James Earl Jones. <laughs> I don't think I could do it that low of a voice. I can make it sound like Arnold. <laughs> Did you just drop one? No. This is me <laughs> just moving my chair around. I was just moving my chair. I swear. How? That rhymed. <laughs> Once upon a time in a galaxy far, far away. <laughs> Star Wars. Wow. <laughs> there we go. Get that foreground nice and dark. We're in the shadows. Let's get some color. We'll go in here. Watch this. I got I'm gonna get a nice beautiful bright purple. And I've got some little <laughs> flowers in here. <laughs> Do you have a favorite horse story? No, not really. Favorite horse story? Horse. Yeah, no. I mean I've I've got some funny stories where I got bucked off but everyone's, well, everyone's had, had a horse has been bucked off so I'm making some little purple flowers look at it look at what we can do just with some brushes I mean I totally faked this today this is one of the things that's that's super cool with this is being able to being able to create this with just a few minutes. Now let's go yellow, bright yellow. Hey Aaron, at Disney, did they make characters uh, turnarounds or they just designed them in dynamic poses? No, we did turnarounds all the time. We had to we we had to come up with a a, a dynamic pose, but then we had to turn those poses around so that the sculptors could sculpt them. So is it turn around like an actual like just like a two D version of of one pose, just like front, back, side, yep, side. Yeah, but you got to turn it, and you know, you got to show different views. Like when I did when uh, when Tony did Yao's uh, sculpture for me, I had to find that design. I had to find the pose, and then Tony. Um, uh, Tony uh, used the drawings for the sculpture. Yeah, that's a good idea, Nick. I agree. Let me see here. 
we put everything let me take everything that's in the foreground it's basically here to here whoops hit the wrong button here to what's here. the name of that brush set i'm guessing for the foliage all right here it's a foliage brush set <laughs> <laughs> hold on one second i'll tell you so from here to here i'm gonna merge and here, Dustin, because of you, now I cannot say technology without a Scottish accent. Darn you. <laughs> there. Hopefully that's better, Nick. I, that's a good, that was a good call. And also, I want to get in there and uh, yeah. You know, oh, God, I keep hitting the wrong button. If you think saying saying technology without a Scottish accent is tough, try saying Scotland without using the without using a Scottish accent. <laughs> there we go. I want to get a nice dark hoof. Correct answer is Ghostbusters. What was the question? What? Nick says the correct answer is Ghostbusters. Was it a favorite comedy movie, I guess? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. There you go. Yeah, I know Nick loves Ghostbusters. Wait, quiet. You smell, you smell, smell that? You smell that? There we go. And it's... Greetings from Scotland. Have Have you ever drawn or painted a Highland uh, Highland cow? Love the pose of two horses. An amazing piece, as always. Uh, no, I've never drawn a Highland cow. A Highland cow. I've never drawn one. Drawing on the wrong layer. Can I can I live with you for a month? I I need time to learn and food. <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> How to bite no. Yeah, little fluffers in the air. Love is in the air. Love is in the air. But it's very muted right now. I'm feeling it's very muted. So let's do this. We're gonna take that. And we're gonna take this. What well, feels very muted? The everything. The, everything. Everything. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny, man. I don't care who you are. Bring, bring everyone. 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 <laughs> uh. Okay, you didn't have to scream at me. Jeez. <laughs> what do you think of the term uh, Disney style? I've never thought anything of it until I started studying different animators and artists. That's better. Look at that saturation pop. Beauty. 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 It's beauty. That's much better. I like seeing saturation pop. Operation Saturation Pop. And I had to pump it like 50 points to get it to the the nice dreamy quality that we have here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Beauty. 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 All right. Hey, you know what we need back there? Hopefully I can do this without, uh, because I, I merged everything. And Eric, and Eric agrees that that did it. That did it. That totally improved the image. <laughs> and now we see the horses through the eyes of Kenai. Exactly. Good call, whoever that was. <laughs> Martin Burger. <laughs> That's awesome. 
That's so, that's so true. Did you hear the, uh, the question I asked earlier about the term of Disney style? Oh, no, I didn't know. Uh, what do you think of the term Disney style? I've never thought anything of it until I started studying different animators and artists. Yeah, it does. I mean, there is a, there's a certain Disney style is not so much, doesn't always refer to the look, although sometimes it can. To me, Disney style is more than just the look. It's also the, um, I don't like those clouds. I'm going to start over. It's um, the amount of work that is put in. You know, Disney is known for putting a lot of money into their films. And so to me, part of Disney style is the fullness, the, 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 the craftsmanship. You know that that is you know is is done. Not to say other studios don't. I'm just saying. Um, Dog on it. You know I got to put those clouds. I got to put those clouds behind them, which means I got to get rid of this layer. I got to copy this one. Look how gray it is now. Isn't that funny? Yeah. <laughs> it just looks totally washed out now. That's what we were drawing. Oh my uh, god. Oh, I gotta first before we do anything, I need to go back behind the horses. There we go, right there. Horses. Horses. Horses for sarses. Now now see I can put clouds back there. And it feels more natural. There, look at that. If given the opportunity, is there any scene you would like to reanimate now that you have gained, uh, or yeah, gained more experience? Yeah, I mean, I I'd love to reanimate all of Raja. I worked hard, but I I was a young animator that didn't have I I struggled with it. Is that rain? Yeah. Wow. Actually, is the is the door still open? Yeah, but it's okay. There. Yeah. I'm not sure if that was the extra noise. I did. There's a door. Hue and saturation. Oh, yeah, I got to blow this up. Okay, so now. Look at that. There's your horse. There's your horse, Catherine. Your horses. Your horse. Your horses. They as your horse. Let's put some little love is in the air. Little furches, little insects in the air. That sounds more like electricity. Yeah, so if you're interested in these foliage brushes, they are at creatureartteacher.com. You can get that whole set for two bucks. Come on. Come on, right? The creature art teacher dot com. It's a lot. <laughs> so let's uh, let's do this. Let's do that. Here's our big horse. Your horse. Our horse is a horse, of course. You've got to get on the horse. We'll try one more thing. There hey, it is. there he is. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it's funny, right when you're right when you're saying that I read I read in my mind somebody wrote just one more thing. Haha. <laughs> <laughs> Truth. Perfect timing. Truth, just, my just one more thing. You know, heat up some of these little bright areas. Just ever so slightly. <laughs> what? Martin, <laughs> There's a little outburst. Martin, <laughs> Martin Berger wrote, The horse on the right, is this the smell of love in the air? The horse on the left, yeah, I just farted. <laughs> you obviously found that funny. Yes, I did. <clears throat> Oh, 
So here I'm just going around and hitting some of these alias. Getting some reflected light underneath. Might be a little too much, but hey, it's fun. Let's get into his eyes a little bit. Let's go back to here. Let's go back to normal. Let's grab. Oh, we're going to keep that brush. We're going to keep that brush. We're going to keep that brush. And I'm going to come down here. Whoops. There we go. Just adding some little details in his eyes. Like, what? Adding little details around the eyes. There we go. There we go. There we go. <laughs> Do horses have meat sticks or flesh paddles? <laughs> oh, that's a good that's a good question. What do you think? Meat sticks. So here I'm just shoring up a bit more of the painting around the around his head. Twitch question, when focusing on a drawing, do you sometimes find yourself mimicking the emotions of the characters? For example, <laughs> if the character you're drawing is angry, like the bear from the last time, do you weirdly find that you're making a grimace, angry face unintentionally? I do it all of the time. Yes, very, very, very much so. It's feeling the emotion. You got to feel, feel that emotion. And very often you'll find yourself making that face, that horrible face. <laughs> there we go. So there they are. Our little horses in love. Love is in the air. Everything is the love bow. <laughs> Let's get a few straggler hairs here. You're stra straggling stragglers? Yeah. Beauty. Beauty. That's uh, quite a beauty you got there. Thank you. You're welcome. Beauty. 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 <laughs> Idiot.
There. Fun horses. <laughs> hey, Gabby just hopped on. Hey, Gabby. Hey, Gabby. She's asking, is this still live? Did I barely make it? You're fighting for the toilet paper? <laughs> Almost there. Yeah, I'm curious. Is everyone else going through a toilet paper run? Again? Out there? Somewhere? The, the to TPs are selling out again? Yeah. Seriously? Yeah, that's what's happening at Gabby's place. What? Wow. They didn't learn the first time? No, humans don't learn. That's what I'm saying. Humans don't, don't learn. Hello there. Well, very rarely do we ever. Very not, rarely. not as a, not as a mass though. Not as a group. Yeah. Well, I guess it's a good thing I have a whole stock full of them at home. Mm-hmm. I'm glad we got a butt washer. <laughs> oh yeah that that toilet that weird contraption yeah well don't knock it till you try it buddy <laughs> yeah i saw a girl punch another girl at the store the other day over the last pack <laughs> jesus There we go. There's our horses. Gabby's making pancakes. Is wondering if uh, anyone wants some pancakes. I'd love some pancakes. Can you, can you ship some our way? Holy smokes! Holy cannoli! There it is, folks. A moment in love. This would be, like, if I was doing this for a movie, this would be considered a moment. This would be, a, like, this would represent a scene in the movie. We did a lot of stuff like this called moments. And it's, you know, hey, this is the moment this horse falls in love with this other or flirts with this other horse. And um, so you, you sit down, you do little illustrations like this, and we do different beats from all over the movie, and you would use these as part of your pitch when you pitch the movie. And so these always came in very handy doing stuff like this. Interesting. Yes. yes. Very interesting. This makes you want to sit and look at it and go, very interesting. Yes. Why did I go to Russian? I don't know. <laughs> Dustin, what is the game you most play? I play a game called War Thunder. Uh, it's on consoles and, consoles and PCs, though I highly recommend on PC. And it is a uh, air, somewhat of a air simulator slash tank simulator, navy, helicopters, all that jazz. It's all player versus player based gameplay. There it is, our horse. Is a horse, of course. Of course. So remember, this weekend only is our big cat course. Our how to draw big cats is available available for only fifteen dollars. And for that matter, we also have a how to draw horses course, where just like I did today, you can learn how to draw horses, and uh, it's really cool. We've got uh, how to draw wolves. Coyotes and foxes, how to draw bears, how to draw big cats, how to draw horses. Got a whole bunch of them. How to draw birds of prey. And uh, over time, I'm you know my goal is to fill that library um, as much as I can. Uh, I, I got another question uh, question here. When focusing in on a drawing, you sometimes find yourself. Oh, I read that one already. Sorry. So um, and then also are remember you at that camera. Or you look. No, I was looking up here. Oh, you're looking up. There. Yeah. I'm looking at the image. So December 12th, um, I've got my live event coming up if you guys are interested. It's from 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So it's six hours worth of material. And I'm going to be talking about character design with dogs. And then we're going to animate on paper 
those character designs. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, uh, and thank you, Catherine, for today's suggestion of drawing a horse. I really enjoyed this. This is a lot of fun. I love sitting down, not knowing what I'm going to do, and just kind of find my way. Today was a little difficult. It was a rough start, but I think we ended up okay. Yeah, okay. I think you know, so. Kind of like it. It's kind of a nice, nice horses. Great nice. Um, and uh, once again, um, we're going to be having a different sale every day between now and Black Friday. So um, make sure to check back with Creature Art Teacher every single day because there's going to be a deal to be made all the time, every single day. And uh, so thanks a lot for joining us. I really had a great time. Um, go out and draw some horses. Remember, when you do them, put them in a situation like this. Tell a little story. See what's going on. Um, it, it always makes the illustration a little bit more uh, interesting. So until uh, next week, uh, Black Friday, I guess. Are we going to be doing a, a, a – I guess we'll do a uh, – yeah, we're definitely going to do a live stream yeah. on Black Friday. Yeah, I think so. Um, I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving here in the United States. For those of you elsewhere, have a great weekend. Um, I really enjoyed today, and I will talk to you next week. Go out, put some beauty back in the world, and put your sharpened cutter away. I'll talk to you later. Bye. Hey, guys, thank you so much for watching. Glad you guys enjoyed this stream. And if you're interested in any wildlife photography on Instagram, you can check out my Instagram at Dustin underscore Glaze. And I'm going to be posting new photos uh, very soon. And also you can check out my photo bundles on CreatureArtTeacher.com. Uh, Florida wildlife from alligators and otters all the way up to... Uh, com uh, uh, you okay? Yeah, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Great blue herons and uh, sandhill cranes, among others. Oh, I got to say. So, so be sure to go over there. Check those out. You guys have a good week. Happy Thanksgiving. And as always, Cowboy Bebop. See ya.